My name is Tyrone Stevenson. I'm 53 years old. I've been married for 29 years and I'm the pastor of Hope City Church. And I'm Terry Stevenson and I'm 54 years old and I've been married to this handsome man for 29 years and I'm the First Lady of Hope City Church. There's been so many defining moments um, in pastoring that's worked to increase my faith. Uh, one that sticks out to me is uh, our church was renovating, had been renovating for, at that point, you know, 15 years. Uh, just little things at a time, small pieces at a time. And it was now time to do the outside of the building, which looked horrible. Um, the outside of our building looked terrible. We've been renovating the inside uh, because that's where people come. So the outside didn't look well at all. And it was time now we could not let it go any further. Um, it was becoming dangerous, you know, bricks falling, that kind of thing. So it's now, it was now time to do the work. And one Sunday morning, I'm preaching and I'm talking about faith and I'm talking about the fact that something God wants us to do and we need to renovate the outside of our building uh, so that it is appealing, it is safe, and so the people responded because folks were ready to renovate because the building didn't look like, um, it didn't represent the quality of our ministry. And uh, in that moment I said, and we're gonna do it debt free. And the church erupted and people started worshiping God. And I literally said out loud, did I say that out loud? That moment where I stepped in front of the people and said this huge endeavor uh, where we, at that time, the architects say it would cost $210,000. Um, we said we'd do it debt free. It actually wound up costing closer to $400,000. And the fact that we did it debt free um, was a place that sticks out for me in remembering a time when my faith really took a great leap um, in, in these 20 years. Well, if he declared it, I just have to agree with it. Sometimes I think it's over the top. <laughs> a lot of times I think it's over the top. But that's what faith is. Faith is over the top. If it's something that we can accomplish ourselves, then it's really not that's faith. That's right. It's not faith. But if he says something to do something debt-free when you have $1,000 in the bank, that's, that's over the top faith. And so I just really go with whatever he says God is saying to him because guess what if it works it works if it doesn't then we just keep on trying we just keep on going faith is just continue is, is a mindset of continuation of not stopping and not believing in what you have not yet seen so I just continue to support him in things that he's not yet seen what has leading Hope City Church taught me about my faith over the last 20 years? It's taught me that faith is something that grows, it develops, it's not this static thing that you got, you've got it and that's it. Um, that it's something that grows, it develops. Uh, that God gives us portions of what he wants us to do in proportion to the faith we have. And once we're able to, to take that portion, it's in the doing of what he said, in the obedience, that our faith actually grows. Um, and so I think it's taught me that without an assignment to my faith, there'll be no growth. And I think that's the biggest thing for me, uh, that whenever God gives me an assignment, I know there's going to be faith building in that. An example um, would be uh, when the Lord spoke to us about um, going to a multiple location. Uh, and I was completely against it. So at our, our facility in East New York, we, had already, we were already doing three services. It was wearing me out. Um, and so we needed to find a way um, that would be a, 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 a strategy for growing the church. And when the Lord said to, get a, to do it in another location, I was like, uh, no, that's too much. And then we had a sewage flood in the basement of our East New York location where we, we could not be in the building for like three months. So that caused me to, without any doubt, move outside of the building 
and the place that we landed became our second location, uh, which was in Spring Creek, not too far from where our church is. Um, and then when we came back to East New York, we kept that location. So then that made us one church in two locations. I would have never made that move um, on my own just stepping out. It was this process, these steps that God took me through. And once we got on the other side of it, we could all see that, man, it was God knowing that this uh, sewage issue was going to happen. And the fact that we had already started making moves made it so that we didn't have it, we didn't have any break in continuity. We went from one having the flood and then the next Sunday we were in the new location having service. No break in continuity. And that's what faith is. It's just stepping out. What has leadership taught me mm -hmm. with my uh, regarding my faith is to step out on it. Leadership is doing some things you've never done before, seeing how it works. Things that work, continue to build on those. Yeah. Things that don't work, figure out what you learned from that and you keep continue on. You're consistently growing in leadership. There's no like one level of leadership as far as I'm concerned. And so I think that we always, any leader needs to be comfortable about who you are and what you have to give. There's no one leadership style. We all have to just embrace our own leadership styles, put it into action and continue to move forward and keep learning and keep growing. And I always encourage anybody, if you're in leadership, don't be afraid to lead. <laughs> That's a good one. Don't be afraid to lead. Do what you feel like you've been called to do with what you've been given. And that will help you to become a better leader and not be afraid. I feel God is calling me to take my leadership to another level when he called me to minister to the women at Hope City Church. We have a ministry called Cyana. S-Y-A-N-A, -A, that stands for sister, you are not alone. I had never led that many people before. I had never led women before. So it was all new to me. And because God told me when I first came on as first lady of Hope City Church is to love the people. And I said, God, this is all I know to do is to love the people. And so I took my assignment of loving the people to loving the women specifically in helping them in areas and growing them, helping them to build a relationship with Christ for themselves. So I had to have a relationship with Christ myself. A leader must always be the first partaker in whatever you're leading in. And so that's what I've done. I've embraced that I'm a leader for women and it has grown. Some have come and grown and stayed. Some have come and left. But whatever a person does with what they've learned, that's on between them and God. But for me to lead the women in a way that they have never have before, letting them know that I'm there to support them, I'm there to help them, and I'm not judging anybody, because I'm not perfect, they're not perfect, but we will grow together in God and to be better women in God so that we can be better wives, so we can be better leaders in anything that women call to do. One initiative that Cyana has implemented that is truly dear to my heart is Strip Church. Strip Church is a ministry in which we as women serve and serve women in the strip clubs literally we prepare and we show love to the women in the strip clubs but that wouldn't have happened if the women were not confident about, about who they are so that we can help others and we go in we're not judgmental we're not throwing the bible at them we're not throwing scriptures at them we are there to show love and support for our sisters who are in that industry. And we have a wonderful team of women who does it so well. And it's amazing to be able, not only do we go in there, but we've received 
the women actually receive us in the strip clubs. And I know that's a lot of people like, how do you get in there? <laughs> you know, even my husband's like, you actually go into the strip clubs? I'm like, yes, because we're taught how to um, communicate with the bouncers and the den mothers and the managers of the strip clubs. And we go in there and they may be doing a lap dance. They may be in the back changing their clothes or what. And we go in there and we give them these um, items that they can use. We have, we give them a Jesus love strip of Bibles uh, and God just moves. He moves in our efforts. And that again is what leadership and faith is. Leading them into a world that they've never been before and having the faith to believe that who we are touching, that their lives will be touched and that they will be an ambassador that they would become saved, that they will get to know Jesus Christ for themselves and change their own lives. One of the ministry's uh, endeavors that uh, I was completely against um, was when my wife came to me about strip church. And um, I'm asking like, strip church, explain that to me. Uh, and so she's telling me, we're gonna go to the strip clubs. I'm like, whoa, 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 hold up. Who's going to the strip clubs? And she's explaining to me the women are going to strip clubs and we're, and I'm like, you mean strip clubs like where they dance? Strip clubs, strip clubs. She said, yeah. I said, and here's what I said to her. I said, sweetheart, um, what would that look like for the church van or bus to pull up to a strip club? We pull up to a strip club and in the van says Hope City Church. And it didn't dawn on me that where else should the church be? And so I was against it. And um, I said to her, mm, I don't know if we're gonna do that. Let me let me think about it. Let me pray about it. I don't know. I don't know. And I prayed about it. I said, Lord, is this something you want us to do? Like, I mean, how do you want us to handle this? And here's how God answered me. I'll never forget it. He said to me, if one of your daughters had run away and found herself in this industry, if your daughter was caught up in, into this lifestyle, uh, wouldn't it be something for uh, a church to come into the strip club and just simply tell her that I love her? That might be the message she needs to call you and come home. That's somebody's daughter. And when I finished that prayer, from that day to this, there is nothing they can ask for financially that they don't get to do that ministry. So yeah, it's that's another place where God grows your faith uh, by following him. So that would be one of those places for sure that I was completely against and now I'm their biggest supporter. If I can use one word over these last 20 years, for me it would be yes. And I would say yes, Lord, but yes. Because when I made the decision that we were moving to New York, uh, agreed with the decision to move to New York, I didn't want to come. I did not want to come. I didn't. <laughs> but when I said yes, it was my anchor. No matter what we going through and whatever, even in the future, my answer is yes. And that's what I've had to stand on. So I would put it all in one word for me as yes, because that's what's keeping me, my commitment, that's what's keeping me um, connected and continuing to grow in God, is my yes. The growth of hope as a concept in our church over these 20 years um, has been enormous. Um, I'm now in a reflective mode because we're celebrating, preparing to celebrate our 20th anniversary. And so I found a journal entry that I'd written um, shortly after the installation. Um, and it was me writing um, in a very trepidatious way, how would our church receive me putting forth our very first budget of $62,000. The whole year, the budget would be $62,000. And I was so nervous because we had uh, very few people uh, and the people we had didn't have any money. Um, and so I had been teaching 
the first 16 weeks, I taught on finance through management. Um, so I taught it on Tuesday night Bible study, and then I preached one of the concepts on that Sunday. I did it for 16 weeks. And so now I'm gonna put forth our very first budget. And I remember reading or what I wrote 20 years ago about how nervous I was. How will, how will we even raise this? Where's this money gonna come from? Um, and right now, where we are in time with this video, we are preparing for our business meeting, our vision meeting, where we lay out to our church, you know, the new budget for this year. And I'm looking back at how would we ask the church to raise a budget of $62,000 when today the budget I'll present to our church in a few weeks is over a million dollars. In East New York, it's, it's, it's nothing but God's grace to even be having this conversation. With everything that's happened in 20 years, and not to mention probably one of the most difficult times since the pandemic, uh, where churches have completely failed. Um, our church has put forth higher and higher uh, budgets since then. So man, that for me is, that's a place where I see hope as the concept growing enormously. Um, from 62,000, oh my God, how are we gonna do it? To standing before our people in a few weeks and putting up a million dollar budget and not even blinking. Yeah, that would be it for me. Reflecting on that first service, the installation service, February 1st, 2003, the church was packed. I mean, no seats, no standing room. Uh, Pastor Jenkins, our father and in the ministry um, from First Baptist Church of Glen Arden in Maryland, they came with buses and just packed the place out. Um, he preached the initial service for me. Um, and then he uh, and his wife laid hands on uh, First Lady and I to commission us in this new work. So that's very symbolic to show that he uh, was covering us as we led this church. Um, and so having served at First Baptist for so many years at that point, um, it was you know a lot of people that I knew and people that I've led to, to Jesus who were now part of First Baptist, people that we invited to First Baptist um, who were now in leadership, um, who came up and helped us um, celebrate um, that particular day. Our children were young. Um, you know, our oldest daughter was six and our Hannah, our youngest daughter was only was three. Um, my son, our son wasn't even born yet um, at that time. And so it was, a, it was an extremely special time for our family. Um, because we were being commissioned to lead this church together. When you're called to ministry, I believe you're called to ministry as a family. Um, and so that that's something that sticks in my mind um, all the time. It always sticks in my mind. Yes, reflecting on February 1st, 2003 was truly a memorable moment. Like you said, although it had a lot of people, it was just knowing that God had trusted us mm. to be in this position, that he had anointed us to be in this position. I never forget, and I see the, the, the image in my mind when my husband and I kneel before Pastor Jenkins and his wife, and they took a moment and they prayed over us. Pastor Jenkins put his hand on my husband's head and First Lady Trina put her hand on my head and they pronounced a blessing upon us. Yeah. And I think about that all the time because if you know Pastor Jenkins and First Lady Trina Jenkins, they're so unique. Their gift is so unique. And to be able to even just think or know that just a portion of their anointing that God has given them is on us. And I see it after these 20 years. I see the compassion that they've had. I see the commitment that they had. I see the love that they have for their family and for their church. And I can see part of that anointing is flowing through us and at us through our family and our church. 
it only gives me great hope that one day we will be able to do the same thing for the next upcoming pastor and his wife and his family. Generation, not just in our family, but generations for our church of hope. And that's what I'm looking forward to doing and sharing and being that connection from our spiritual fathers the mother to another spiritual father to being a spiritual father and mother to the next pastor. If I were to reduce my 20 years of pastoring to one word, it would be, without being cliche, hope. I've watched in 20 years countless hopeless situations turn around. I've watched people come to our church with no hope and to see them Years later, leading, helping, growing, doing things in their own families that require them to be hopeful for the future, um, it would have to be the word hope, which is what God told me 20 years ago. He said, what I want you to do is bring hope to East New York. That's the word.